feel. I'm Holy Ghost feel. Uh, amen. It, it, it doesn't offend me. Amen. It's not antiquated to me to say Holy Ghost. So I'm just not a part of that, that new stuff. So I'm just going to stay with and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. While Peter yet spake the Holy Ghost. Come on here and talk to me up in here. Glory to his name. How many of you thank God for the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Oh, bless him. Glory to God. And we just thank God for all that he's doing and all that he desires to do. I want to call your attention to the book of Lamentations. Beginning... At verse number one, however, has the Lord covered the daughters of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto earth the beauty of Israel. And remember not the footstool in the day of his anger. You can be seated. We just praise God for everything that he has done and everything that even God desired to do. When we look at all of the goodness of God, and all that God desires to do for his people. Let me read something here in chapter 1. Beginning at verse 1 is how does the city sit solitary that was full of people? How is it become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes among the providence, how is she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheek among all her lovers. She has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her because, between the straits. The way of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted. And she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chiefs. Her are the chiefs. Her enemies prosper. The Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgression. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. Let me skip down to verse eleven. All her people sigh. They seek bread. They have given their ple pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. See, O Lord, and consider, for I am become vow. It is nothing to you. All ye that pass by, behold, and see if there will be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. What is done unto me? Wherewith 
the Lord had afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. Is it nothing to you? Now we look at this very small book that's tucked away behind Jeremiah and the awesomeness of it is that the author is of, Jer of the book of Jeremiah is the author of, of Lamentations. But in the midst of the book of Jeremiah, it, it's a book of warnings. All that Jeremiah has, his preaching, his prophesying was about warning. Speaking to Israel of the disobedience, the transgressions of the word of God. But now we look at the book of Lamentations. It's a book of weeping. When we find ourselves suffering from the afflictions of God. Because of transgression, because of disobedience. And now, this beautiful city is not beautiful anymore. This place that was full of people is not full of people anymore. All of the friends have become enemies, and now. Jerusalem is in a place that they need comfort, they need consoling, and there's no one to console them. Because God has something that he wants to say. And now when we look at verse 12 and Jeremiah comes with a profound question. A statement rather than say, it is nothing to you. Now people are passing by, they are looking at the destruction of Jerusalem. They're seeing the desolation. They, they're seeing what God has done unto them because of disobedience and transgression. And now, it doesn't matter. People are looking at what's going on with a spirit of indifference, lack of concern, and lack of interest. And this is what Jeremiah was saying with the onlookers. They're passing by, and they're looking at all of this destruction. They're seeing the walls torn down. They look at all of the desolation in that has taken place in Jerusalem. And people are not concerned. People have lost their burden for what had happened unto Jerusalem. The amazing thing about Jerusalem is geographically it sits right in the center of the world. You look at it on the map, it's right in the center. But now we, we find Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, all of the prophecies, all of the things, the warnings that was coming to get Israel on track. Warning them about their disobedience, warning them about their transgression. And so finally, they go into captivity. The enemy come in and ravish the beautiful city. Now they are not concerned anymore. People are walking by, looking at this once upon a time beautiful place, a place full of city, a uh, uh, people, but now it's desolate. And people passing by and you got some that looking and they looking at what that transpired, weeping and crying. Jeremiah also in the midst. But Jeremiah opened his mouth when looking around and said, 
is it nothing to you? You, 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 you are not concerned about what has happened to Jerusalem. Verse 6 is that from the daughters of Zion, all her beauty is departed. She's not a beautiful place anymore because of the desolation, because of the disobedience and the transgressions. Now she's not a beautiful place anymore. And now the people that once upon a time walked by and beheld her beauty, beheld her greatness, now the greatness is there in him no longer. Now the beauty is there no longer. And people are walking around with the spirit of indifference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that all of these things that have transpired. That all of these things have happened in Jerusalem and nobody is concerned about it. Now, you know, I, I, you, this is why people need to know who Jesus is. So they'll learn how to appreciate who he is. He, he's not just some figurehead in the sky. But you, when we come to the knowledge of who he is, when we recognize him as the son of God, when we recognize him as the word incarnate, the word made flesh among us, and just let us know how that we can live with the word on the inside of us. To see a depiction of who Jesus is, is letting people know that you can live holy, you can live righteous and godly in this present world. Come on and talk to me. We're living in a day and time that people don't know who Jesus is. They don't know what Jesus looked like. And I'm constantly reminded of the devotion I read many years ago that it stays in my mind. A mother was cleaning the house. And her daughter was sitting in the floor real quietly, not being rambunctious. She's not getting into any trouble, just minding her own business in her own world. So her mother was concerned. She asked her daughter, she said, what are you doing? She said, oh, I'm drawing a picture of Jesus. She said, the mother replied and said, no one knows what Jesus looked like. And the little girl replied, they will when I'm finished. And that's what's wrong. Nobody know what Jesus looked like. They think Jesus is like the pie in the sky. They think Jesus is caught up in all of this prosperity. Let me tell you something. Jesus did not die for you to have two and three Rolls Royce. He didn't die for you to have a summer home, winter home, and spring home. He did not die for that. He couldn't care less. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. And they that forgot that Jesus came not to bless you and deliver you from your sin. He came to let you know that you didn't have to die or nor continue in your sin, but you can be saved and saved for real. Look at your neighbor and say, you can be saved for real. <clears throat> oh, glory to God. It's not walking around having a form of God in it, but denying the power thereof, the proof that you're saved for real. My God, that you got the power of God manifested in your life because the Bible said after that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. You shall receive power. Let somebody take power. Power. Woo! Oh, glory to God. And see, this is what's wrong. The absence of power in the church they're professing Jesus Christ, but the problem, the real problem is there's no power in the church. I got all they're doing is they're going through a form and a fashion. I got they acting like they know God. And see, let me tell you something. Let me, the, the real problem, and God blessed me this week. And he said the problem in the pulpit is the quality of preachers. Folks in the pulpit are not even qualified to preach. 
I don't care if you don't ever like it. You got people that that's willing to lay down their life. My God, for the sheep. Uh, God, Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Uh, God, but the hireling, he don't lay down his life because the sheep are none of his. But that shepherd of Jesus Christ, uh, God, the one that God has blessed, the one that God has called, he's concerned about the sheep. Look at the mega church. They don't care about the sheep. All they're con concerned about is the numbers. They don't, I guarantee, I'm calling the devil's name. T.D. Jake going to call one person Miss church. He ain't going to call. That other wolf down there at the oasis of devils, Joel Osteen, him and Vicky, none of them going to call anybody. When they're not, then they are missing because there's no accountability. The real pastor is accountable for the sheep. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. My God, you leave the 90 and 9 and you go after that one that have gone astray. You think they're concerned about their soul? I don't care if you don't ever like it. But my God, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. It's all about the dollar. It's all about the, the number of people. My God, it's all about the money that's coming in. But the thing about it, the real preachers are concerned about your preparation for heaven. Because according to Hebrew 9, 27, it is appointed that the man wants to die. And after this come the judgment, it wouldn't be bad if we just die, rot, and stink, and go back into the dust from which we came. But there's a soul, my God, in man that belonged to God. And he said, I soul of mine and we're going to have to get up and my God body, soul and spirit and we're going to have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ and we're going to have to give an account of every deed done in our mortal body whether it's good or whether it's evil and my God now thank God uh, God I'd rather have a watchman watching over my soul I'd rather have a watchman that's concerned about my soul I uh, God rather than just being a number in the pews The true shepherd, when that sheep wandered off, my God, when they got one that says, continue wandering off, the, the good shepherd, he'll go and break his leg. he break his leg, but he don't leave him out there as a prey for the wolves. But my God, he take me and put him on his shoulder. And so now it's you can't carry yourself. I'm going to carry you. Oh, you don't have to worry about running off and wandering off no more. My God, I'm going to nurture you. My God, back to spiritual health. I'm going to get you back in a place with God that having done all the stand that you will stand there for. My God, you will run this race until the end. He can that continue to the end. The same shall be saved. I'm trying to get people prepared. I got to continue to the end. My God, we need a word. My God, that's going to shut me. A word that's going to bring me to conviction when my soul is out of line with God. <laughs> the greatest sin in the church is the sin of indifference. Because the church is not concerned. See, this is why the churches, all they're doing is inviting these devil singles in, secular singles. They're bringing them in because we can't hold the people. Because Jesus didn't draw them. None come and save it. If God doesn't draw them, they're not going to stay. And so you, you didn't, God didn't draw them, so you keep on going out to the world. We bringing all these worldly folks in. We want them to entertain. Instead of the church being a place of deliverance. It has become a place of entertainment. Now, God, folks go to the church now to be entertained because we got all these celebrity stars. Or we got celebrity preachers. You bring them in and let them serenade us. 
and does not bring them into the presence of the Lord. My God, I don't care if you don't ever like it. My God, people have a melodious voice, but it does not mean that they're singing under the anointing. Don't you know that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance? My God, you don't have to be saved. My God, to have a melodious voice, they're just a gift that God bless you with. And you can choose to bless God with it, or you can go out there and bless the devil with it. Come on and talk to me up in here. But you got to have a mind to serve God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Do I have a witness in the house? I got in your mind made up that you're going to serve him with all your heart. You're going to serve him with all your mind, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Can I get a witness up in here? Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, save yourself. The Bible said, according to Acts 2 and 40, with many other words, did he testify and exhort and save yourself. Look at, come on, look at him again and say, save yourself. Don't worry about me. You just save yourself. Don't be worried about somebody else. You better save yourself. Come on and talk to me. When I look at the, what transpired in the upper room, even though Mary was the mother of Jesus, she had to get it for herself. I got she wasn't no family plan. Even though she was the incubator, I got that brought him into the world. I got, but she still I had to go in the upper room, and no doubt she was just like the other hundred and, and the nineteen. I got that crying out saying no doubt Lord send your power down I want it I need it I got to have it blessed be the name of the Lord and it's time to cry out with all of your heart with all of your mind with all of your soul and with all of your strength my God we cannot my God serve God with a spirit of indifference we got to be concerned about souls we got to be concerned about one another Jerusalem in a bad state. Nobody to comfort. Nobody to give a words of restoration. Says so, uh, you know to bring her back into relationship with God. I want every one of us to understand. Sin will be rewarded. Sin will be dealt with. It will not be overlooked. Like the preachers of today would have you to believe. And uh, God understand. Uh, God that you, 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 you have to sin. Now God doesn't understand that. He understands that you sin when you don't have him. But when you got him in your life. He's able to keep you from falling. That's what Jude 24 said. Now unto him as able to keep you from falling. And guess what? He'll present you perfect. He'll present you faultless. Uh, God you don't have to. In other words you don't have to kill, commit sin. Uh, God the Bible has a profound question. In Romans 6, 1 and 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It said, God forbid. Then it's okay, God forbid. He said, how shall we? That are dead to sin. Live any longer than you. My God, in order to be saved, you got to become dead from sin, uh, to sin. You can't be saved in sinning. Y'all didn't know that? And I don't care what these devil preachers say. When I look at Ezekiel 3, when I look at Ezekiel 18, when I look at Ezekiel 33, it tells me that the soul that's in it, it shall surely die. Not might die, not as a possibility. It, it, it is a fact. It shall surely die. For the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And so we got to have a mind and a desire to turn from everything that's not like God. But we got to have a heart. We got to have a burden. My God, for the souls of men and women, it just can't be us for it no more. My God, we got to be concerned about soul. Mr. Milo, give me Luke 10. And I want you to start begin reading at verse 30. Y'all just bear with me. We'll preach a little bit. Luke chapter 10, verse number 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Come on. 
and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment. Now indeed he fell among thieves, and they beat him, took his possessions, come on, and wounded him, come on, and departed. Leaving him half dead. Left the man that half dead. They didn't beat him almost to death. He was on his way to Jericho. But there were some thieves out there. Beat him up. Took his possession. Left him there. Half dead. Come on, read. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Hold it. The priest. And this, this is the old a high position of the Old Testament. Now the priest, a representative of God, he come by, see this man wounded, go to the other side. And our churches today, they, they, they are not concerned about drug addicts. They are not concerned about prostitutes. Now, God, they are not looking at the low lives of our society. They are not concerned about the homeless. My God, we just want the money, honey. They just want a certain type of people in their midst. They are not reaching out to call these type of people to come in. But I got news for you. Jesus died for all sorts of people. I, anybody that you can think of, there's nobody that's not left from up under the umbrella of salvation that Jesus didn't die for. He died that all men might be saved, that we might not perish, but have everlasting life. I got, he didn't go around and say, no, I died for everybody except this group and that group. I died for the whole world. You want to quote it? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, not a certain segment of the world. He so loved the world. Whatever make up the world, all sorts of people. He loved it. And not only that, the proof that he loved it, he gave his son. And the proof that the son loved it, that he gave his life. The reason being that he gave his life is that we might not pray, that we might not go to hell, but have everlasting life. The, the purpose of Jesus dying was people to have everlasting life. So I, even though I don't approve of people's lifestyle, I love the people. I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. Because God said he's angry at the wicked every day. He want to see souls saved. He don't want you to die and go to hell. That's why he went to great length, sending his son. A body has died prepared me. And he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O oh God. I came not to do my will, but thine will, O oh God. I came to provide a way of escape. My God, from sin for men, women, boys, and girls, that they don't have to die and go to a burning hell, that they can be saved. Now, the priest, you would have expected him to go over there and render aid, some assistance. But he moved to the other side. Is it nothing to you? That that man lay over there in need of help, and you moved to the other side. And likewise, a Levite, uh -oh. when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Holy, this is a depiction of the church. The priest, the Levitical priesthood the, uh, with the law. They supposed to be upholding the law. And here he is, here he is, get on the other side of the road. Passing by. That's so. And you got all of these folks that, that saying that they love the world and people that made icons out of these cons. 
And I don't care if I'm, I'm you know, Joel O.C., he's a con. And y'all made an icon out of the con. T.D. Jakes is a con. Y'all have made an icon out of the con. Y'all found out that Eddie Long, that was, he was, y'all made an icon out of him, and you found out that he was a pervert. That, and so he's not the only freak out there. It's some more pre- freak in the pulpit. And don't care if you don't ever like. And see, now with this, this, this law that, that, that's liberal homosexuality, you know, you're going to find out more sisters in the pulpit. More preachers going to come out, and, and then folks going to be readily accepted because they're just a man. No, 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 you don't understand. You're supposed to be a man of God. You're supposed to be a child of God. And when God saved you, he saved you as a man. Come on, talk to me. God is not saving sisters. To stay that away. Y'all didn't know that? G- give me real quick. Jeremiah, I mean, 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 9 and 10. <laughs> 10 and 11. <laughs> Read. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? These people are not, this is just a name of few. They are not going to heaven. I don't care who try to justify it. They are these, they're just to name a few. We're not going to go to the Galatians 6. But we're we just going to talk about these few right now. Come on, read. Be not deceived. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let nobody trick you. Come on. Neither fornicators. You're a fornicator. You're going to hell. You out there having sex out of wedlock, you going to hell. Why is that, Elder Tom? Because the body is not for fornication. It's for the Lord. The Bible said, according to 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 2, not concerning the thing where you wrote unto me, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, but nevertheless to avoid fornication, having sex out of wedlock. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So, you know, and folks, they, they kind of mess with me, but I don't care. You know. I say a single woman don't have no business. I ain't say a widow woman. A single woman don't have no business with no children. Come on now. Come on now. Not her biological children. Right. If she have adopted some or inherited some, that's one thing. But she have no giving, giving no reason giving birth to one because she had no business doing nothing to get one. And I don't care if y'all don't ever like. It. See, you want to in- in- endorse fornication. It's wrong. You're going to hell. Now, I'm not saying you, you God will still save you. you. You God will still save you. You can be delivered. But I'm just saying from a biblical standpoint, a woman don't have no business doing nothing to get no baby. If she have her own husband or have her own, and, he have, she have, and she have her own, he have his own wife, then that's, that, that's biblically legit. Even though it's not politically correct. It's biblically correct. Come on and talk to me up in here. Amen. Now, why, let, let, me, let me help you. Don't say now that that's kind of extreme right there. No. When Jesus, they brought before Jesus this woman caught in the very act of adultery. They was doing it. So they didn't bring the man she was doing it with. They just brought the woman and said we caught in the very act. So you saw both of them. You didn't say she was going with herself. You said you called in the very act of adultery. So that it was two in violation of the marriage bed. So now they bring the woman before Jesus and, and Jesus, they're telling Jesus to under Moses' law. That's all that he knew. Needed that what you knew Moses' law, but I don't quote part of it because Moses' law says you bring the man and the woman. So, and when Jesus wrote in the sand, I believe that Jesus wrote, Where's the man? Since y'all was knowledgeable about the law, where's the man? And so, one by one, the Bible says they began to leave, especially when he said, He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. They out there full of sin as dog ear fleas because cause they didn't uphold the law. So now, Jesus stood up. He looked at the woman and said, Woman, well done, and accused us. He said, There are none. 
And he told us to go. So in other words, you, you, even though you, you were caught doing it, don't go do it no more. I'm going to be nice today. Don't go and do it no more. So you, you got to stop it. Stop it now. So you, you stop it and you present your body not to God as a living sacrifice. So God can walk in you, so God can talk in you. He can be your God, and we can be his sons and his daughter. And, and so now, from a biological standpoint, sons and daughters, that's the only way he recognizes. He's not going to recognize you because you're talking about I'm a man trapped in, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. Now you're a lie. You're a man. You're a man. Don't care if you don't ever like it. I could say, almond joy have nuts. Mounds don't. There's a difference. It ain't cause you, you messed up in your mind. It ain't, ain't no hormones. It's your demon that got you want to act like you a man when you are a, a woman. Act like you a woman when you a man. I don't care if you know if you come to Jesus Christ. Oh, don't think don't think Jesus is gonna readily accept you. My God, be your, your name was, was, was Sam, and, and now you Samantha. You going to hell because when you stand before God, Sam. But my name is Samantha. Sam. Sam. None they but I was I was a man, a woman trapped in a man. Sam. And they're gonna be more in grease eggs and ham. You're going to have to stand before God. And you're going to have to give an account of every deed done in our mortal body. And the thing about it is, the churches, the T.D. Jakes and a whole lot of other black ministers signed off on with the president. Tom, it's okay for same-sex marriage. Charles Blake of the Church of God in Christ, he signed off on it too. They encourage this thing, and you hide in the word, you're going to be a man of God and for sin at the same time. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. And I got news for you that in the church of God in Christ, Jesus said that the blind be leaders of the blind. They both going to fall in the ditch. But I didn't do it. You follow in the blind leader. You need to separate yourself. Even though Paul, my God, was uh, Saul, of, Saul of Tarsus, he was a man of the Pharisee sect. But when he got saved, my God, he came out from among them. And he said, I count all that thing but dumb. My God, that I might receive Christ. You got to give this mess up. You, not, you don't go to heaven because you tied to some religious organization. You the body of Christ. It's not an organization. Organism. My God, it's not an organization. It's an organism. It's a living being. You can belong to the church of God in Christ and don't belong to God. You know what don't be you're not connected to the body. I came out to stay out. Don't care if you don't ever like it. But it was the word of God said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And then I will receive you unto myself. In other words, as long as you're in that mess, I will not receive you. I will not accept you. I know the Bible is right. And somebody's wrong. See, somebody... See, folk don't pay attention to TDJ. TDJ don't preach by him. He's just a motivational speaker. He's not going to go through the scripture and let it be, as Isaiah said, line upon line, precept upon precept. He's not going to go through scripture, and it's not that he's illiterate. He chooses to be. He knows the truth, but he caught up in fame. He caught up in power and popularity. Power. Come on, talk to me. So he don't care what the Bible said. But he going to hell. 
he's going to hell. And all you on YouTube, I, I got to hear what you got to say about that. I got to show me Bible that justified these devils. Because the man of God going to preach the word of God. And you cannot be a man of God and not, not uphold, my God, the biblical principles and precepts of God's word. You, you're not supposed to say nothing about these folks like that. Hymenaeus and Philetus. If Paul can say, Annas down to the coppersmith, it done me much harm. But, you know, that's all right. He's not going to escape. God going to reward him. They went around preaching that the resurrection had already passed and have overthrown the faith of some. They going to hell. And so Paul was warning them concerning these folks. And now, God, we got the warning folk concerning these false preachers and false folks today. Come on, talk back to me. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. I got somebody got to stand up. And when you put the trumpet to your mouth, my God, you better blow it. You better blow it. You better blow it. Do I have any ministers in the house? Wait, where are the ministers at? Where are the ministers at? Let me stand up. Let me talk to you. Where are the ministers at? Oh, my God, when you put the trumpet to your mouth, my God, you better blow it. You better blow it. You better cry louder, and you better spare not. My God, you got to show men and women their sins and the house of Jacob, their transgression. You don't want to walk around with a pretty Bible, a beautiful briefcase, and now God ain't got a 10-cent message. Uh, do you want a message? My God, that's invaluable. The truth is invaluable. The truth is invaluable. The truth is invaluable. Why is the Thomas? Because Amos said there's going to be a famine in the land. Not for the fear of food or drink, but for the hearing of the word of God. And surely Amos might have lied. I got with this day and time. I got with churches on every corner. Churches across the street from one another. And my God, and you said there's a famine in the land for two. You're absolutely right. You can't go there. To the church and meet Jesus down there. You go down to meet entertainers. You don't go down to meet Jesus no more. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all men. I will draw all men down to me. And look at your neighbor and say, it's time to lift up Jesus. Come on, Miss Miles, let me finish up so I can move on. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters. Idol worshipers. Hail Mary, full of grace. It's going to be Hail Mary, but full of fire. Come on. Nor adulterers. Adulterers, you're not going. Men and women, you got preachers can't be faithful to their wife. That's something wrong. How in the world you can find the devil going to tell you about how to keep the word of God and, and, and the word of God can't keep him? You want me, you know, that sounds like Matthew 23. Jesus speaking unto the, 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 the disciples and, and, and the multitude, saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. He said, all they bid you that observe and do. He said, but be, uh, do not after they work for they say and they do not. They're telling you one thing, but they won't do it. Don't do as I do, but do as I say do. That you better run from that devil like a scald dog from hot water. Uh, God, because let me tell you something. Uh, God, when, when the real man of God is saying, follow me as I follow Christ. Come on and talk to me. I need somebody. My God don't love God with all of their heart, with all of their soul, and with all of their strength. I need somebody that's concerned about me. Read the book. Nor effeminate. Okay. I got news for you. I don't care what President Obama signed in the law. It's abomination. It does, will not surprise me any day now that the judgment of God come upon America. America, all these years, was a land that always fought battles on somebody else's soil. 911, the chicken came home to roost. But because of the immorality that exists in America, America is becoming one of the, rapidly becoming one of the most vile and disgusting countries there is. 
It might be a land of opportunity for money, but it's all a land of opportunity to do whatever you want to do, whatever kind of sin. I got to, when it used to be wrong, I got illegal to, to get me smoke marijuana to buy. I got, no, they, oh yeah, this okay now. That Jocelyn Elders, under the Clinton administration, she was before her time. She was, betray, she was trying, my God, to get them to legalize it way back then because her son got busted. But if he, he, it's okay now because all you got to do is just go and just go up there and open you a shop, go down there and get you a little license and say, hey, come on up, I got some good stuff up in here. It's medicine now. It, it, we ain't just getting high on it now. It's medicine. We got medicine that can get us high now. All we need is some sick doctor to write a prescription. And say for the asthma they need to get high. You know our society is sick. And then the sickness of, of, of everything. A sissified man. In the city of Houston. They said we want the sister to be able to. To go into the bathroom, which a, you know, a man can go into the women's restroom. A woman can go into the men's restroom because she's saying she's a man. Now, if Hollywood ain't swinging, you go on to the other room. Don't care if you don't ever like it. All they're going to do. And when it does happen, I hope they sue the city of Houston. Because some pervert, other than these other perverts, going to go in there and they're going to molest somebody. Whether it's in the men's restroom or the women's restroom, it's going to happen. Because of a sick person come up with some sick ordinance. And then what the city of Houston needs to do is find out who all Council men and women that signed off on it so that, hey, we can clean house. Throw the dirty, riding scoundrels out. We need people that's going to represent us. You don't represent the mayor. You represent us, your constituency. It's the reason why you are sitting in there as a council person. It's not because the mayor handpicked you on uh -uh, the those constituency. And so you are not concerned about what your constituents say. You're going along with a perverted mayor. Don't care if you don't ever like it. Come on, read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves. Come on. Nor covetous. Come on. Nor drunkards. Come on. Nor revilers, come on. Nor extortioners, come on. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Read. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Wait a minute. That's the whole purpose of Jesus coming, so you don't have to stay that way. Don't you remember? Such were some of you. Such were some of you. I know it's such were you were sisters, but you you got it straight. Some of you walking around there. With your wrist limp, you got men trying to speak in a high-pitched voice, and you got these nasty women trying to speak in a bass voice. Don't care if you don't ever like it, but when you come in contact with Jesus Christ, I got when you come into with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, man, you big old seven-foot, seven-foot, big foot, with your limp wrist, and this other... Last player drafted in the NFL. Man, when he got hurt, man, he just smacked the man right. Oh, the Lord. That's like kissing a pig. <laughs> After he done slop, snout dirty and nasty, and you just smack him. Yeah, can you just visualize that? That is so vile. And folks are trying to praise him. The queen of talk. We're going we to uh, create a documentary of this field. 
But I got news for you. You know what Oprah does? A gift will pervert the word of God. As long as she give them refrigerators and give them this, that, and other, and folks sit out there, they go along with it. Because she's anti-God. She don't have nothing to do with God. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. But I got news for you. God going to reward her. He's going to reward her. I know y'all in love with y'all some Oprah. I love her too. But I, I hate the sin that she represents. The sin that she upholds. Because she has her own TV station. We're going to offer this pervert a show. God going to get this man. He's going to get the president will not escape. God going to get him. Glory to God. Everybody that's appertaining to sin. Okay, let, let me just thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch this. Dathan, Cora, and Abiram. They got them a group of folks together. And they came against the man of God. So Moses told them and said, hey, I tell you what. Dathan, Cora, you are Abiram, and everybody that are appertaining unto you. You just you come on, stand front and center. Let me tell you something. If God has not spoken unto me and do a new thing, then you're gonna know He hasn't spoken to me. But because of your vileness, because of all of those that are associated with you, God gonna reward you. And He said, God gonna do a new thing. And then a little after that. The earth opened up asunder and they went down into hell alive. They went down into the pit alive. That's Bible. That's Bible. And so God's going to have to do a new thing. God's going to have to come up with another disease. My God, the folks not care, scared of AIDS anymore. God's going to have to come up with a new incurable disease. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. Because if God doesn't do it, he won't be God. If God don't deal with the miracle, God's going to have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. And one thing I know about God is his immutability. He has not changed. He was the same yesterday, today, and forever, past, present, and future. God is going to be the same. He's not going to change. And he's going to reward every man according to their evil deed. And you got these preachers sitting around. Is it nothing to you? That you see all of this pervertedness? Is it nothing to you? You won't say nothing about it. You won't do nothing about it. You won't do what you can to cause men and women, boys and girls, to turn from their wickedness. Preachers not going to preach against sin when they messed up. And you can't sin and say, well, I know my pastor not right, but see, I don't do that. You're going to hell because you violate scripture. Don't you know sin is the transgression of the law? What, what scripture I violate? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. God said, come out from among them. And if you're sitting up under false leaders, you're sitting up under this liars and deceivers, whoremongers, you're going to hell. You come out from among them. Real quick. Give me uh, Jeremiah 5, verse 1. My time is about up because I'm pressing for time right now. <laughs> Jeremiah on. chapter 5, verse number 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Come on. And you got to run. Don't walk through them. Don't crawl through them. You run. It's a period of time of desperation. You better run through the streets of Jerusalem. Come on. And see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. Come on. If ye can find a man. What, you, you need to find a man? You're trying to find a man of God. You're trying to find a man of God. What, what set the man of God apart? Come on. If there be any that executeth judgment. We need somebody that's going to execute judgment. Somebody that's going to cry out against sin. Not somebody that's going to look at sin. Uh, God, with indifference, you don't care whether they sin or not. But Jesus cared enough to die. And God cared enough to give his son. And the preachers don't care nothing about sin. Because I don't know what Joel said. Uh, you know, it's enough bad news in the world today. Folks are depressed. It's, gonna be, it's enough bad news in the pulpit when you don't have folks that uh, stand up and preach. He told, listen, 
Jeremiah, don't you be afraid of their face. Their face. Because if somebody's going to look mad, they're going to look funny. Because when you preach this truth, somebody, somebody is not in line with this word. And so they're going to look at you funny. But you preach it in the house. You set your face like a flint. My God, don't you apologize from the truth. My God, where the ministers at today? Where that again? Let me see you again. Let me see you again. Let's stand front and center. Let me see you again. My God, don't you be afraid of their face. You don't change the word of God because of what people, how folks look. My God, you just stand up with a, a face like a flint. And don't you move. You tell it the more. And this is what's wrong. In the churches, we don't have strong mothers. Mm. When you had that was the time you had strong mothers. How God they they accentuated holiness, and they expected it out of the new converts. And they they saw something out of line, they gonna call you to the side. Now God it makes you hey, you got to line up with the word of God, and mind you that everything is done in love. And even though because in your in your spirit when they correct you. The devil's tendency, if they loved you, they wouldn't have said nothing to you. No, no, it's love that caused me to say something. According to Revelation 3 and 18, for as many as I love, I rebuke and chase Be zealous, therefore, and repent. But when you stand up, the opportunity come, my God, for you to blow the trumpet, you better blow it. Your job, my job, is to help somebody. Talk to me, somebody. And see now and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If you can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment, that seeketh the truth. Somebody that seeketh the truth. You want somebody that seeketh the truth. You, you don't know, want nobody going to all this. You know, it, it, it vexes me. Now. Folks, they got all of this mega mess and all this junk and folks ain't getting nothing. The mega so-called supposed been a god not then went Hollywood. You done brought all these actors and actresses in, in there, and now ain't no god in it whatsoever. And for it's just a media media circus. It wasn't nothing in the first place, and, and, and we just got weak. And I don't care if you don't ever like it. I had a preacher, that, that, you know that devil. You know, devil used that man. He called me. And so, oh, I thought I, man, I, I thought I called Pastor So-and-so no. Because I'm up here in Atlanta at the mega mess. He he know that he ain't missed call nobody. He wanted me to know he was up there with this man. I knew you messed up anyway. That's the last place you need to be. You know, that it's just commercial. And all they do, you go and pay 16, a 16 point, whatever, nine ounce bottle of water. You paying three and four dollars at the so-called mega mess. You have to buy your water. You done bought your tickets. You, you, you pay for your room and board and all that there. Now you got to buy your water. They won't even supply you with water. Don't you know it's all about the money, honey? See, if I go to an Astro game, I expect the water to be high. But this is supposed to be a God-sponsored event, event, and then you are charging folks for water. You you bunch of cones. I keep telling you they come. Because when you have come into the presence of God, you don't leave out of there the same way that you came. Come on, talk to me. When the, the Jesus came into the coast of the gathering, I got that met a man that was a demoniac. That man had devils and devils and devils. And but my God, when he saw Jesus, the Bible said he ran and fell at his feet. Oh, glory to God. It's something when you come in contact with Jesus. How God, does you realize there's a difference? There's a difference. I can't stay the same. How God, and I believe that this man wanted help because when he saw Jesus, he didn't run from Jesus. He ran to Jesus. And when people want help from God, they run to God. They run where God is at. Come on and talk to me because everything that got holiness on the door is not holy. The 
with false advertising. Got holiness on the door, and, and they worse off in some of these denominational churches. But when you come into true holiness, uh, God, then did you know, uh, God, Ephesians 4, 22, 20, 20, 22 through 24, my God got to take place. You got to put off the former thing of the old, the former conversation, and you got to put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, uh, God, this profound change that taking place in your life. You cannot be saved and stay the same. This man, when he saw Jesus, he ran and fell at his feet. But let's talk about his state before he saw Jesus. Man, they had feathers. They bind him with chains and feathers. But because of all of the devils, he was breaking. And not only that, he walked around there. Then he was a nudist, didn't have any clothes on. You know he was messed up because he died in the tombstone with no clothes on. After cutting himself with stone, howling. <laughs> 